Okay, we're rolling. So this is a five month review of the Fido T1. Uh, a very nice bike, it's been great fun and all of that. Um, but it has, it's got two problems which I'll get to. And one of them is a kind of a substantial sticky kind of a problem. Um, so anyway, uh, this is a bike for those that don't know, is a, it's based on, well, loosely based on the Radrunner equivalent. It's a bit better looking than the Radrunner. Nicer colour maybe, this green. Um, and this here is a Radrunner box which I've put on um, to the centre of it which is working out very good, very well. Uh, it, it just has a, probably the edge on the Radrunner. The Radrunner has 3 inch wide tyres. Now uh, this has got 4 inch fat tyres, 20 inch. And some different things. Uh, it's around the same price as the Rad Runner as well, so take your pick. But it's heavier also, and I think it's more powerful and gutsy. And it's got probably better suspension. I don't think the Rad Runner has suspension on the front. So anyway, take your pick. But uh, it has been a really nice spike, and uh, in my opinion, a keeper. It's one I want to keep because I um, I actually sold the the MX02, the Sheng Milo. Uh, and I kept this instead, and I used to love that bike. So it's just saying something, it's a really nice bike to, to ride. Uh, anyway, let's have a look, go ahead and have a look at, uh, from front to back, the how things are holding up. So first of all, we get to the tyres. And these tyres, they were very nice the first day, really. And they're very good tyres, they're very quiet and all of that, they look well. Uh, but after about five or six hundred miles, which is something like what I've now put up on the bike after four months um, This middle tread here is beginning to wear down that there were not very deep treads to begin with You can see there maybe two millimeters or something and it's worn down a bit So I'm gonna to have to replace these soon front and back. So you're talking about a 600 mile tire or maybe a little bit more uh, They've been okay in the wet and what have you, but they just like I say, they're a very shallow tread. That's the problem with these tires. Okay, let's go into the brake. So the brakes, are, I've already changed out the brakes completely from the originals. And these are the brakes and I recommend them. And you get them easy on Amazon. And these are, um, they're, well, they're, they're a cheap clone of Zoom or whatever. They're semi-hydraulic. So you've got the cable coming down here. Very easy to pick up on Amazon, these calipers. And uh, you're still using cables, it's not hydraulic, it's semi-hydraulic, I suppose. But it's hydraulic internally and you've got equal uh, pressure on both sides of the disc. And uh, they're much more effective, um, well worth putting on. They're about, I think, 20 euro each caliber, front and back. And uh, they're easy to fit on and everything. One thing about them is if you fit them on, you, uh, please retain your old brackets. You'll need those, and the washers here as well, the spacers, you'll need those as well, probably, when you're fitting them on. Uh, but there's no problem, there's no squeal on them, they're much better than the originals. There was a lot of squeal in the originals, although the, although the originals were quite strong and quite good. But there was, there was, there was no squeal on them, they work very, very smoothly, and uh, front and back, and they worked immediately as well. There was no tuning or anything like that of them. They've been very, very good, I have them on. I suppose over a month now, probably two months at this stage. Okay, so the brakes are holding up good. The brakes are nice, yeah. And it's the best. It's the it's the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Um, between high, fully hydraulics, fully hydraulics are nice, but uh, they're a pain because you will have adjustment and fluid draining and all of that of them. Uh, but at the same time, these are very very good, very smooth. Okay, so we come on to do uh, the carrier. So this carrier here came with the bike of course. Uh, it's a steel carrier apparently. It's very sturdy, very heavy, very good for carrying stuff. It's very, it takes a lot of weight in the front. You could probably sit up on that. It's held on here by these four bolts and uh, they're all very good. It's, it's very good. Um, and then you have the light and the light is really quite fantastic. Let's just see if I can turn it on now. There it is. The bike is on. That's the display, I hit it once more, and there we have the light. And the light is really amazing. And I didn't realize it for the first while because I never took it out at night. But uh, you have a head, your head in a dip, a main beam and a dipped light. 
and uh, I had no idea it was so good at night but it really lights up the entire road it's just a brilliant headlight so that's the headlight if you do have this bike and you get it um, when you're fitting the headlight there are two not one but two adjustment screws here at the side of each on both sides uh, make sure you adjust it properly by loosening both screws and bring it up the uh, up the angle of the headlight because a lot of people complain that the default angle is just a little bit maybe a degree lower than this is this is here this is pretty much vertical looking because uh, and then tighten it up on both sides because when you put pressure on the bike when you come on you sit on the bike the weight comes on and it goes down another half a degree or whatever on the front so you need to do that to get the light properly adjustment adjusted a lot of people don't seem to realize that and they have the light sitting too low so the trick is to lo loosen both screws on both sides of the light then bring it up fully and then tighten in both screws so let me talk about this battery in the Fido T1 after about five months um, I've done about 600 miles in the bike more or less and the battery I think it's still okay it's not bad but uh, it was never great to begin with in terms of uh, range so it used to be able to do when it was new I think 25 miles on throttle only which wasn't bad because it's such a heavy bike it's 79 pounds in weight um, I think now I would get about the same or maybe 30 miles if I operated on PAS 2 uh, for the last five months I've always operated it on PAS 2 alone. We'll just turn it on here where we can. Turn it on. There we go. And I normally operate it on PAS 2 on this one here. Okay. And I also normally operate it with the headlight on as well. Which is a brilliant headlight. But the headlight uses very very little power because it's LED and the headlight and the backlight. So the battery is still serviceable and it's still usable and I have really no issues running around the city. But it's not a great combination of a battery, the, the type of battery it is, it's not a great idea. Because it's a very, very heavy battery. It weighs 13.2 pounds in weight. And even if you could afford a second battery, uh, it wouldn't really be feasible to be carrying a second one of these batteries around. Uh, for example, if you wanted to go out of town or somewhere, you could certainly carry it. You, you could mount a suitable case up there or something to carry a second one. But really, they're two really heavy batteries to be carrying around. Bikes with smaller format batteries like the MX-02, which was a 17.4 amp hour battery, was much smaller than this. It only weighed seven pounds and much, much lighter. So that's feasible to carry two of those batteries. But to be carrying two of these things, no, I think not. Now, the problem is with this bike, as I've explained before, uh, this bike, this throttle here, is strictly speaking not a throttle, in fact. Uh, it's just a switch. So you have it all on power or nothing. And it's, it's totally the same as the cadence sensors in the pedal. When you travel with the bike, when you use the bike, uh, it's impossible to operate it without giving full power all the time, full throttle. Um, whether you're in PAS 1, PAS 2 or PAS 3 levels. Uh, I operate on PAS 2 because it's limited to about 19 miles per hour, 30 kilometers per hour. So when I go above that I'm on pedal only and I typically go along at 20 miles per hour but you're using full throttle as soon as you rotate the pedals you have no choice so you can't feather it and this thing here is just to take off to help you to take off but again it's full power it's not it's not a little little bit you know sensitive you can't adjust the throttle or anything it's not actually a throttle it's just a switch in fact so this is a bad design uh, because it means that it's the, the bike has a very very lively motor it's very very powerful it's, it's fantastic fun but you have no choice but to ride the bike like that and this of course is going to be hard on the battery on the life of the battery using all that power all the time obviously um, whereas really what they needed to do was put a switch or an offset switch as I said before to give you maybe 80 or 90 percent of the power that you want to be able to switch it to a lower level so I highly recommend and Fido should have done this that people do that in fact and I'm going to do it myself when I get a chance 
And that means putting a, a potentiometer of some kind, a dial maybe here, or possibly a switch, an AB type of switch. And you'll take that from a, a diode in the, in the controller, which is down here in this part of the housing. You open it up, there's a little diode, you unsolder a leg and you lift it, and you bring a wire coming up here to the switch or to your potentiometer and back down to the controller. And therefore, when you have it in the lower setting, uh, it's just normal like it is now, full throttle. And when you have it on the other setting, you switch it or turn the dial accordingly. Um, you'll give it, you maybe you'll program it to about uh, 80 or 85 percent of the full throttle. Now, I did an accidental experiment with this. I put in the battery of the MX02 here, which was a 17.4 amp hour battery, much smaller battery, and I rigged it up and I tested it out and I found that that little battery was doing about 20 miles per charge as opposed to the 25 miles that this gives or used to give per charge. But it, it was about operating at roughly 85% of the power levels that this bike operates, this battery gives. Um, which is fine actually because it was still very powerful, it was able to go up hills, um, you could go along at top speeds or whatever you wanted to in Paths 3 if you wanted to. It really performed lovely in fact. It just took the energetic jolt out of it and I thought it was exactly what I wanted actually. So um, moving forward, like I say, to install a switch like that uh, is definitely needed and Fido should have done that in fact. Um, but anyway, the, the question then comes to replacing this battery when, if and whenever it goes out of service or becomes too bad to use. So uh, I don't really recommend that people actually buy a replacement for this battery. First of all, this big battery, 13.2 pounds as it weighs, uh, on the Fido website is the price of it, I checked the other day, is gone up now to 770 euro. It used to be 670 euro five months ago. It's gone up incredibly. Um, and it's kind of ridiculous pricing. Now given that the cells in this are 18650, some of the batteries on these Fido T1s in America or whatever might be 2170 cells. I didn't get those, I got the 18650. And the cells are 2600 milliamp hour cells. It, it had it been 3500 milliamp hour cells, uh, it would have, you would have had better battery life and better ultimately power levels but you'd have had more in the battery and I think you would have had better longevity as well. But I have to emphasize that putting in the switch that, that I recommend uh, is really a thing I would recommend people do before putting any new battery on this bike. So having put in that switch what are your options actually um, from the point of view of getting a replacement battery? Now, like I say, you can get one of these batteries if you want. It's quite literally half the price of the bike now. More, actually. I paid 15 20 for this bike when it was new, delivered, no delivery charge, and the battery is now 770 So, and on top of that, I don't fancy having a second one of these batteries because they're awful big. And I don't like the idea, as I say, of carrying around a second battery, a big heavy battery to do a few more miles. It's kind of ridiculous. It's not, it's not an attractive battery format. I'd far prefer a smaller battery to be able to mount on the back. You could mount a, a case there or a suitable sack or whatever it is and have the battery in the back. And you'd rig it up via wiring here. You put in extra wiring to rig into your new battery and you'd use a smaller battery and you could take out this battery then for running around town and don't bother carrying the big battery around for short hops around town and uh, it's a much more attractive option if I'm honest. So I think I'll probably be doing that and you can source all kinds of cheap batteries maybe 15 amp hour maybe 12 amp hour battery even smaller one lighter one put them in the carrier. Um, unfortunately with this carrier, you don't really have the space under to get a battery in, it's a pity. But nonetheless, there's a lot of scope to be able to remove this wooden plate here and mount batteries in and so on, different, different arrangements. So there are lots of possibilities. Um, you could even mount a battery inside here if you wanted to, inside this 
central console thing. If you if you had a small one, if you wanted it, it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I think that's my strategy going forward. I'm going to source a smaller battery and put it in. Now, having that done, plus the switch to switch it onto a lower level, lower power level. Uh, when you get a smaller battery, you may actually naturally get smaller power levels available on the throttle, which could cut it back to 80 or 90 percent, and it might work out just fine. In fact, it might be just the way you want it. Um, but there is another possibility with this battery here. I think the best strategy when it comes to uh, the end of its life is instead of buying a new battery for about half the money half that 770 euro plus you could actually order 3500 milliamp hour cells and replace cells in this there's about i don't know what there is probably 52 cells in this i imagine it'll come to about 350 euro you can buy and order them in it'll take a bit of work you have to obviously open up the case the battery and you need a multimeter which is very cheap 10 euro you will also need to get um, a spot welder which is a small thing you can buy for about 30 euro you can get them on Amazon very easy and you know there are plenty of videos to show how to replace cells and for the day and a half or whatever it'll take you on and off doing it um, I think it's a much better option and what you will be left with in that case is a battery um, with considerably more power instead of being a 20 amp hour battery it'll essentially be something like 26 amp hour battery so it'll be very very big in its power and that combined with the throttle that I mentioned the switch to, to installing the switch I mentioned to bring down the acceleration uh, I think that that would uh, provide a battery that would last a long time the charging the amount of deep cycles on these lithium ion batteries is typically 500 deep cycles 500 and you're finished so a battery like this might last me another year from now or something like that i don't know maybe maybe less but uh with that kind of arrangement of rebuilding this battery you'd have a you'd have much better longevity for only about half the price in fact of this that this battery costs so i think that's far more attractive proposition given that it's not going to take that much work a few hours for sure but not all that much work so it's a much better proposition than simply buying a replacement one of these batteries i think it's i think it's crazy i think it's mad okay uh, but i can't emphasize enough that before you do a replacement of this battery or rebuilding the battery be sure to put in a switch to bring down the levels of about 80 or 85 percent of the throttle to offset the throttle and give it a lower level uh, because that's very very important and with that i think that will be the solution going forward for this so i'm going to have a battery mounted on the carrier some kind of a small battery or a lighter battery to get me around town and i'll use that from day to day and i might even get a second one of those if it's working out well and eventually then when i come when it comes to rebuilding this or replacing this unit here i'll rebuild the cells i'll change the cells out i'm not paying 770 euro plus shipping for this replacement of these batteries when it will be gone again in another six months or 1500 miles or whatever it is no thanks i'm not going to be doing that nonsense so fido really should have had i think in my opinion they should have first of all first and foremost they should have sorted out the power levels they give you a, sm a lower power level so you're not knocking the ass out of the battery so fast in only a few months that was the big mistake they made with this bike other than that the sheer size of the battery i think slightly physically slightly smaller and lighter would have been better um and that way it's more attractive idea to have then you might be you might be compelled to buy a second battery to do longer journeys out of town and all that kind of stuff but i don't fancy having two of these batteries hauling it around on the bike the bike is already plenty heavy i don't want it to be any heavier and i don't fancy carrying a second one of these batteries it's a bit ridiculous uh, and then of course you have the horrendous cost no so Fido, they kind of messed up in this way really they should have they should have thought this through a little bit better in terms of 
battery longevity and not having a throttle, a proper throttle, instead of giving it simply all the full power all the time. That's all you get with this bike. And uh, that's ridiculous because it's going to impact, and it has impacted longevity in the battery. So I have no incentive to spend money on this, on rebuilding or replacing this battery without a, a, a throttle that can give you better options and lower power levels. Now, there is a, there are other options too that you can do apart from that. Uh, instead of fixing a, a, a simple switch um, here to give you a lower power, you could actually change out this um, along with the controller down here to a completely different controller. Uh, and you have the problem then of trying to interface that controller with the motor. You should make out okay because the motor is, I think, typical enough. But sometimes you can have difficulty. I, I recommend the Gren Technologies from Canada. They do a very, very good controller and display system. And that controller will actually search for your motor and actually help you tune and intelligently learn what type of motor you have in. And it's a procedure you go through, it takes a few minutes, and it learns properly what the motor is in the back wheel and it adjusts it accordingly. So that's a that's actually a good strategy really. Um, and I would I, I think it's a very attractive proposition in the long term and I might just do it myself, I'll see. But meantime, that's the situation with the batteries. And that's the only thing that would stop me recommending this bike to people. It's a fantastic bike to go and wonderful fun. It's got a few shortcomings um, but the main one as I said is not having to switch the lower trot setting for the throttle. Um, the other problem I found is that the, the original tires, they really are very nice tires, uh, but the tread in them is actually too shallow and I have already ordered a uh, replace of uh, Xiaomi tires from China and uh, they're coming f uh, so they'll be hopefully a bit better but these the tread were very very shallow not much more than it is now when it was new uh, and the front wheel is okay but if we look around the back wheel uh, the back tire it's getting really bare uh, well it's not bare yet but it is going to get bare, so they have to be replaced shortly. So by the way, those tires, they look very nice and they really are nice. They're 67 euro each a pop on the Fido website. So it's kind of rip-off territory. And even the controller, the Fido controller that's in that little thing there, um, it was originally, I don't know, 34 euro or something. Um, it's now 97 or something like that. So it's kind of ridiculous and I don't really, I'm not, I'm not gone on the Fido replacement parts. The only replacement part for this that I see as good value still is this saddle bar here with the suspension in it and this hinge for the saddle. And the actual original saddle too, things like that are pretty good. Right, anything else to be mentioned? Now this central console here. I got this of course off the Radrunner website. They won off the Radrunner bike, um, different company. Uh, this fits, this case fits this perfectly. All you have to do uh, is to change the position of these screws and you have another two holes to drill, slightly lower. But this is only plastic. Um, it's very, very, you don't even need a drill to pop two holes in that to reposition them and I was able to use it so it's actually a very good idea it's it's a great utility for just throwing locks and dumping stuff in like that that's what I use it all the time for uh, what's not so good and the reason everybody hates this are these cup holders this crap on top neither of these are good uh, the phone is a bad idea because it's a bad habit, it does work, you can put the phone in there and it will stay and all, but uh, the problem is uh, <laughs> you, it, it's inevitably going to be left there, you'll leave it there, you'll tie it up outside, a, you'll lock it up outside a shop or something and you go in and you'll forget to take the phone and it'll be robbed. But it's a bad idea leaving the phone there, it's a non-runner. Secondly, the cup holder should have been put over here, 
uh, because it just stops you actually getting down. So it, it's a really bad design. Now, a good option for this, I think, would be, well, Radrunner should actually make this top just blank without anything on it. And these two things gone, just simply blank. But a good option is to actually, you could actually source uh, some kind of a crest or a plate or something, a rubber mat or whatever it is, and glue it on to the outside of it here mount it on, a nice crest or something with an eagle on it or whatever you wanted, and then take a stand knife in the inside and the back and cut out these holes completely and seal it up and all of that. So to leave it simply a flat surface and with something nice to match the bike, it would look well and uh, that's the way to cure it I think. That's probably what I'll do in the end. Apart from that, uh, it's a good idea. The central console is quite good, but a bit expensive at 99 euro, you know. But anyway, I'm getting the use out of it, so it's, it's definitely doing its job. It's definitely doing its job. There have been other bikes now that have come on stream that are an equivalent of this, let's say. A little bit more expensive, but not all that much. There's the Cyrus, the Cyrus uh, Komoda, which is a very, very nice appetizing bike. The Komoda is about five or six inches shorter than this bike. Uh, because in this this bike here, you've got the extra few inches here for the battery between the bar and the front of the back wheel. Uh, on the Cyrus or Komodo, you don't have that space, so it's a little bit shorter than this bike. Um, and it, this, the Cyrus has suspension in the rear, which is nice. And by all accounts, it's a very appetizing looking and a very nice bike. I think it'll be very good. Um, so you could... That's a possibility, but the Cyrus are very dear. There were seven at the time I got this bike. The Cyrus was 700 euro more than this bike, and I didn't really fancy that because it wasn't that good. Also, the Cyrus, because of its double crown forks, uh, it doesn't have the possibility to put on a basket here in the front like this. And this basket, by the way, um, together with that huge, amazing light, is one of the big features of this bike. It's really makes it terrific. Another feature of this bike has been the handlebars and that gives it really great personality and comfort. And another feature is the suspension saddle. And I've put on this saddle myself but the actual bar is very very good. It compensates quite a bit for it being a hardtail bike with no suspension at the back. The suspension in the front is very very good as well. Um, so it has a lot going for it. It's just a little bit heavy, too heavy, because of that big battery, which I've never really liked, if I'm being honest. And uh, smaller, two smaller batteries would have been a better format for this bike, in my opinion. Um, although it looks very rugged and the battery is well, physically well built and all of that. But I just don't like that aspect of it. Uh, so the other option would be the new big dog bike from Hemiway. Hemiway's big dog bike is about 999 euros, just under 2,000 euro. So it's a little bit more expensive than this. The current price of this bike here is I think about 1,750 euro, more or less. It's gone up a little bit, but it's not quite as expensive as the Hemiway. The Hemiway is a hardtail affair like this, and it's got two big square carriers, different size carriers you can fit, an extended one if you want. And uh, it also has a space for the basket on the front and different things. So, and it's also got a 20 amp hour battery, but it's in inside the frame. Which mm, might be a bit better than this arrangement here, I don't know. But you'd have to think about that. So there are different options between the 1600 and 2000 or 2200 